Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today for this quick presentation of Twinmotion. My name is Martin, I'm Twinmotion uh, product specialist. I'm going to be today presenting you the latest version of Twinmotion that we just released uh, earlier this month. Uh, we just released a new patch. So I'm going to be presenting you today this new update and in more general how Twinmotion works. Um, this presentation today will be divided in three parts. I will start with a few introductions, introduction slides for uh, those of you that don't really know what is Twinmotion. Then I will dive into Twinmotion to showcase the new features and also Twinmotion most important features. And in a third part, we'll take some time to uh, just make a Q&A together. So if you have some question, uh, make sure to stick till the end and keep in mind all your first questions. I won't answer them during the presentation. I will just answer them at the end. So, um, so let's get started. So first, what is Twinmotion? Twinmotion is a real-time rendering uh, software created on top of the Unreal Engine and it is dedicated uh, for architecture, urban planning, landscaping. It uses the power of this amazing engine and just add to it uh, an overlay, a simple UI with some, uh, some friendly user tool that allow any user to, to just be productive straight out of the box. Um, as a comparison, here is uh, an image that one of our users created with a standard ray tracing software. It took one hour and a half on a 2K resolution. The same image created with Twinmotion, uh, and actually it was not created, it was the render, the quality of uh, the project in his viewport while he was working on the project. So when we designed Twinmotion, our main goal wasn't to create just a software that create render really quickly. The main idea behind Twinmotion was to create something that is simple. Um, for us, that means creating a simple UI with lots of icons that you know where you are and what you are doing at any moment. Far away from the tons of settings that you have in other rendering software where sometimes you just tweak one value and the render time double or triple. The idea behind Twinmotion, as I said, was really make the simplest software because we know that uh, our user, uh, the people we are targeting uh, with Twinmotion, don't have time to learn a new software at each time they want to create a media. So the idea was to create something that is really like a plug and play solution. With this um, will to create something simple, we, are, we, wanted also, we wanted also to simplify the whole workflow going from the CAD to uh, the visualization tool. So we have created what we call the add-ins. The add-ins create a direct link between the CAD software and the visualization software. So in just one click, you synchronize your CAD. You can be in Revit, you can be in SketchUp, and now you can also, uh, and now you can also be in SketchUp and, uh, and ArchiCAD as well. So for those three software, in just one click, you can synchronize your 3D. It will import everything inside Twinmotion. During the synchronization process, we do a few things automatically. For, um, for most of the software, we have a library that is native inside of those CAD software. And during the translation to Twinmotion, we automatically replace some of those items by Twinmotion physically, physically correct items. It's for the materials, for the vegetation. For example, the vegetation usually in the CAD software is just a basic billboard with the shape of a tree. During this synchronization, we automatically replace all those billboards by Twinmotion 3D animated trees. And also for the characters and the vehicles, we do that. And then just one click going from the CAD to Twinmotion. And then when you are in Twinmotion, it's also one other click to switch to virtual reality. And it's also something we wanted to push forward to our client. It's just make virtual reality more accessible. So now, um, now what's new? Um, so as I said in the beginning, we just released a new update earlier this month. This includes two main things. Um, actually, I will just start to um, 
play the, the trailer and I will uh, take you back after the, after the video. Please enjoy. Hope you like this quick video. Um, so as you saw, we worked on two main things. The first one is the D-Ring link for SketchUp. Uh, it was one of the most requested features by our community. So now it's here. Uh, we now are compatible natively with, with our add-in with three software, ArchiCAD, Revit, and now SketchUp. And the second part is adding a new realistic grass pack with around 30 new items that you can use to just uh, make your vegetation scene more, more realistic. So, um, so now let's dive into the presentation. Uh, today's webinar uh, will actually start uh, directly in SketchUp, synchronize the file inside Twinmotion. And I will actually show you my full walkthrough from uh, the first import to a final image. So our goal today will be to create just a final image. So let's switch in SketchUp. So here I have SketchUp open. I have Twinmotion on the side. First thing that you can notice here is now, once I have installed my add-in, I have this See in Twinmotion button at the upper left on my screen. So I just click here. So you just click here and here I will start a new blank project. It will import the data inside Twinmotion. First thing I want to do inside Twinmotion is it's a bit bright right now. So I will open up Twinmotion library and I will scroll to the ground material and just drag some darker materials. Just switch from uh, keep UV to uh, force a cubic UV. And I will just apply a few material on my ground. An asphalt over here, maybe another asphalt here, and one here. So now that's done, I can start to just visualize my project during different uh, lighting conditions. So here I can just change the time of day and see how it affects the lighting inside my project. Before going too much uh, in too much details inside Twinmotion, I will just come back to SketchUp and show you a bit how our add-in works and um, and what we have with our add-in. So the first thing, the first button is just the synchronize button that will send the data. Uh, you can of course use the add-in at any step in your architectural uh, visualization workflow. So in the early stage, you can import the data inside Twinmotion. You start to work inside Twinmotion and then as you made changes in your SketchUp file, you can just click back here and it will send back the data and everything you have already set up inside Twinmotion won't be lost. You just update your project as you are working on it. The last button here will send you to our online help. So if you are, if you are experiencing any difficulty, if you want to learn a few things, a few tips, you can just uh, click here, it will send you to our website. And here is the setting panel. In the setting panel, there is one, the most important features, the most important functionalities is the first one, is the collapse. Twinmotion can handle millions of polygons, but not millions of separate objects. So for example, here, if I select my, my uh, if I click on my wall here, as you can see, all my wall is a separate object. That means that 
usually if I import this inside twin motion it will be one separate object and this quickly can drain the performances of the machine so by default we have set up a collapse by material that means that all the objects that share the same materials once imported in twin motion will be merged as one big object so for example here if I click on my wall as you can see here all my wall has been collapsed in one single object it's just a way to optimize your file. <clears throat> you can of course disable this optimization, but it's really depending on what you want to do at the end. If you want to create a VR experience, keep it on collapse. If you want to just hide some part of your project in twin motion, you can also disable it by clicking on non collapse. A few other options that could be helpful is the exclude object. Uh, by default, we exclude objects that are smaller than 10 centimeters, uh, like the different screws, because you usually don't need them on a visualization uh, media. You can also optimize the model. It's especially useful when working with uh, cylindrical geometry, like railings. Uh, it basically just reduces the polycon, uh, so you can activate that. And the fixed UV texture is mostly a debug feature that sometimes um, the, the, the texture are a bit messed up. So you can enable this option, synchronize back, and it will fix the UV. It's not enabled by default because it's a bit uh, longer to import than without. So uh, it's just mostly for debug. If you are experiencing the problem, you can check this out. So now let's go inside Twinmotion. First thing that I want to do before uh, adding too much details to my surrounding is set up a camera. <coughs> it's usually the first thing I'm doing when working inside Twinmotion. So here it's, it's a good point of view for me. So we'll go on to the media section inside Twinmotion. Here we can export four different, we can create four different types of media. We can create images up to 8K resolution. We can create panorama. A panorama is a 360 image. Uh, you can place them on, for example, Facebook or other social network and you, you will be able to turn with your fingertip. You can also use third uh, party application to link panorama together to make some kind of virtual visit. Video, uh, we, with Twinmotion we can create standard video, 360 video, 3D video and 360 3D video. So, so four different types of video. And finally, the beam motion. The beam motion is a standalone.exe file um, that you can send to whoever, whoever you want. It doesn't require twin motion. It will open your project in this full screen mode over here. It's without all the editing tools that you have inside twin motion, but you still have a few options at the bottom of the screen here. You can change the time of day. You can call your media. You can make screenshots. So um, it just um, a file that you can send to your client so he can just immerse himself into his project and send you feedback. So <coughs> today image. I will come to the image doc. To create a new image it's fairly simple. I just click here it will create a new image. If I want to customize this specific image I can click on the more. Here I will access all the advanced properties of this specific image. For example, uh, the first thing I want to do, I, li I like to work with a 50, met uh, 50 mm focal. So I'm just changing that. Here we can also change, activate the perspective correction to make sure the, per the, the vertical are straight. But I don't really need those for now. I can also raise the vignetting if I want. I will leave it to default. <coughs> Sorry. So here we have plenty of different options. We can geolocalize the project. So you can make real sun study, sun study and see the evolution of the lighting during the whole year here. After that we have the weather. Here, for example, I can start to just add some cloud coverage and pass some points it will start to rain. And keep in mind that everything that I'm doing here it's on image 01. That means that if I leave this media, I will come back to my default value, to my default scene. 
and this rain has been placed only on image zero one. I'll just come back here, disable the rain. Uh, I'll just maybe change a bit the camera position, something like that. If I want to refresh my point of view, I will just click here. This will save my new camera position. Um, before going in more details, I didn't explain how Twinmotion UI works. So Twinmotion UI consists of three major panels. The first one on the left, it's the library. It's natively installed when you install Twinmotion. It contains more than 2000 items and materials. When you want to drag materials, for example, we saw it a bit earlier, it's just a drag and drop from the library to the viewport. So let's say I want to change this concrete, uh, G just, it's, it's just basic JPEG. Let's replace it by Twinmotion material. So I'll come to the concrete folder and here we have different type of concrete. I can just scroll to see all of them. You have the small turn ball and a bigger preview on the right. So maybe let's use this one. It looks a bit nicer. Same thing for my, for my metal part over here. I will just come to the metal folder inside the library and I will just drag this brushed aluminum. Uh, let's actually drag the same material here. So this is the library. We'll see more objects a bit later. The second most important part of uh, Twinmotion UI is the one at the bottom of the screen here. It's what we call the dock. The dock is basically where you will find all the options, the tools and the settings. For example, here my brushed aluminium is still selected, so I have a few options regarding this specific material. For example, here I can just change the color of my material to make it a bit darker and I can change the reflection of it. Finally, the third panel is the one on the right, is what we call the scene organizer, the scene manager. It's basically a layer system similar to Photoshop and you can turn layer on and off just by clicking on the eye icon. So, um, so now that's done, we are a bit clear on how the UI works. Um, our camera is set up. Let's come back over here. Camera is set up, but right now it's a bit flat on the horizon and also it doesn't have the same materials. When, uh, by default, when you launch Twinmotion, we have what we call the starting ground. If you open the sand graph, it's ju just, um, just a geometry, just a mesh with a basic uh, cobblestone texture. It's just to make sure that you are not just floating in the air when you launch the application. You can, of course, delete this geometry. But here, what I will do is just select my material picker and click on my grass to select it. And I just apply this grass to my starting ground. So it makes sure that it, it's the same materials from uh, my imported geometry and on my, um, on my starting ground. So now that's done, um, next step will be to add some vegetation on the surrounding. So again, let's open the library and now we'll enter the vegetation and landscape folder. I will start with the tree. We have multiple ways to add vegetation inside Twinmotion. First way, basic way, is just drag and drop from the library to the viewport. At each time I'm dragging the same tree, Twinmotion take uh, Twinmotion apply a random rotation and a random scale. So hopefully you won't see any repetition if you are using the same object multiple times. Actually, it's because it, it's a tree. If you are dragging a chair, it will stick to the same scale. So here is the drag and drop. You can also with Twinmotion enable what we call the multi drop. So for example, if I click on this black gum and hold control on my keyboard and click on this hook turn, and let's actually uh, grab a, a new one like the Bradford P over here. Now my tree trees has been selected and at each time I will click in my viewport, Twinmotion will randomly add one of the objects that is inside my selection. And again, because it's in the tree folder, it takes a random rotation and a random scale, so I won't see any repetition. So I can just multi-drop really quickly and create a small park 
per on my project. Again, just to show you how it works here in my scene organizer, here's all the tree we just added with this multi drop option. I can just press shift to select all of them and I can hide them all at once or I can also delete them. Last way to add vegetation and it's the, the way I'm gonna be using right now is with the vegetation tool. Here is a Dropbox where you can add multiple items. So for example, here if I come to the grass and flowers folder, I can just add this long grass over here. And here I can just select what I want to paint on my project. So for example, I will select those three trees and I will just start to paint them using my brush on my terrain. So as you can see, it's even faster than the multi-drop option. So here I'm using a really small brush, but I can of course use a really bigger one. And as you can see, it took me just a few seconds to create this wall forest. Let's just stick to a smaller brush just to make sure that we don't paint tree on the road over here. So I'm just painting some tree all around my project. I re don't really need them uh, on the back behind my camera, but it will be later on when I will be placing some reflection, uh, just to make sure that there is something behind the camera uh, that is reflected in my window. So that's it for the tree. Uh, now let's paint maybe some grass. Uh, here I can use a smaller brush just to paint some grass on my terrain like that. But also uh, a tip that, can, that I can give you is uh, to paint the grass a bit more precisely. What I used to do is select my geometry. I will open the sand graph. I will right click on this object. As you can see here, when you click on the object, it will highlight this object in the sand organizer. I just right click on my object and select isolate now only this object and my forest is shown inside my viewport. That means that here I can just really quickly paint my grass all over my house without uh, painting directly on the house itself or on my roads or on my sidewalk. So it's just a tip to paint grass a bit more quick. So to exit this mode, I will just right click again on the object and now select Exit Isolate. Here I still need a bit more grass, so I'm just going to add some more here. Sometime I'm just going, uh, I just like to just come back to my camera and make sure it's looking nice. So here everything starts to, to take shape. Um, so as you see here in the library, here's all the different new grass and um, vegetation items that we have added to this new version of Twinmotion. So let's actually, uh, let's just create a close-up on, uh, on our new grass. I will create a new image. Let's actually maybe change the tiling on the material um, uh, just behind our grass over here. Let's now add a few, maybe a few clovers. We add some dandelion as well, some weed. I just drag and drop a few vegetation item. We'll come back to my camera. Here I will just change also a few lighting option, change um, the shadow distance. The shadow distance is basically uh, the shadow where the, the distance where the shadows are not calculated anymore. This will sharpen the shadow for close shop like this. So um, just raise maybe uh, the sun intensity. <coughs> just refresh my point of view, something like that. We can add more grass. Let me maybe add some dry grass over here. And again, just some new tall grass. So 
So th this is just a glimpse of the new grass pack that we have added to Twin Motion. Um, you saw it on the trailer. You can, it's free, so you, you can just pick the the new update and just give it a try. So let's come back to our image. Um, now it starts to look nice. What I don't like is this uh, this wood material, this wood paneling material on my side. It's a bit low res. Uh, so we'll just again come back to my material library <coughs> Enter now the wood folder um, Just maybe drag this first one over here um, The scale seems a bit too small for me, so we just raise the scale over here I will also play a bit with the color to have something a bit a bit, a bit warmer And also maybe a bit darker something like that start to look nice um, I don't really like some of the material on the inside so same thing I will come inside first thing I'll just remove this yellowish color on my wall apply the same white to the, all the walls here is supposed to be some stones so I will come to my stone folder and drag and drop a stone material here and same thing here just make sure all my walls are white so so yeah start to take shape um, next thing I want to work on is uh, my foreground over here right now is just this this gray flat color um, so for that inside in motion we have what we call decals decals are basically a projection of a texture on uh, on a geometry so for example, if I select the zebra crossing and I place it here, we can set up an offset. It's basically where the material will uh, affect all the geometry within is its radius. So here, for example, I can just place that. And as you can see, it affects all the object uh, within, uh, within the box. So best way to, to place decals, what I used to do is switch to the top view and I make sure I see all the widths of my road and I will actually start to add some dash marking I will place them on the middle of my road rotate them from 90 degrees and here I will just duplicate them at a good interval 10 meters I will here I can change the number of copy so for example here I will just type uh, 20 copy they are in instance, that means that if at some point I need to change the scale of one, it will change, it will affect all the different instance. So here I just place all my dash marking. Next thing is um, some parking spot on the side. So again, I will scroll down to think my parking space over here. I just place one over here. And same thing, I will duplicate it set the number of duplicate let's say 10 uh, while all those 10 copies are still selected so I'll just duplicate them over here and on the other side of my road here I just make a rotation of 180 degrees and same thing here just duplicate that here Okay, so I think that's it for the parking spot. Don't need all of those. Okay, that's it for that. Um, let's switch back to my perspective view. Sounds good. Next thing, we can add some, um, some a bit some asphalt uh, patch, some dirt, some some grain to the texture. So I just start to drag a few a few stains that I will just raise um, the scale and just change the opacity so we don't really see them, just to to give an idea that the road has been used. So I just place a few of them here and there just to to add some uh, some some grain to the roads. Here we'll also add some some asphalt patch. Just going to add a couple of those, adding some random rotation, 
placing a mix of all the different one we have available here so here I'm just taking my time just to make sure my scene look look right um, of course you don't really need that uh, it, it's just a matter of realism I just just kind of like to to add some details to all the road inside my project so um, so yeah here I'm just taking my time as I said the purpose of this webinar is just to to present you a full world through so here I'm just placing again some some road damage I don't not even sure if we'll really see those on my final image but it's just to yeah to to have to have some details to add some details and also to show you how everything works directly inside Twinmotion, how those decals work. Uh, while we are talking about decals, what I want to add here is maybe some um, some uh, disabled uh, parking spot. So um, just to mention how uh, one of the options works inside Twinmotion on the decal is the sort order. The sort order uh, set what is decals in on top of the other one. So for example here this blue color I set it to sort order one. If I want to have my um, my white line on top of my blue color I will need to place a sort of the higher than um, than the, the color. So here you just place a sort of order of two so now my color sits well uh, beneath my uh, my white line. So I'm just going to duplicate my color three times. Uh, here, same thing, I will take my parking spot and put it on top. Now that's done, we'll just add my disabled symbol, put it on top of everything. And same thing here, I will just duplicate that in the middle of each parking spot. So while we are adding some details to uh, to my roads, maybe it's time to check our furniture folder. Um, so it's divided in different folder. We have home. In home, it's divided by room. So living room, kitchen, bathroom, etc. So here today, I'm more interested in the city props. Uh, here we have some bench, bollard, fountain. Let's actually start with the bollards. If I want to add, maybe let's select this one over here. It's a bit too dark. I can also select the material. I can just change the color of it. I can change the color of any material inside Twinmotion just by selecting it with the material picker over here. So I just select my object, press shift and click on my axis to duplicate my object within this axis. Same thing here, we just, let's say I want 15 duplicate, and here I have all my bollard. All my bollard are still selected, so again I will just scroll down and I will duplicate those over here. Uh, next thing we can maybe add some street light. Let's check maybe this one is a bit small. This one. This one is a bit big. So what I'm going to do is here I'm just switching uh, from my different tool. By default there is the move tool but if you click here and hold you can switch from rotate to scale. So yeah, I'm just going to scale down this uh, light pole and I'm just going to duplicate it uh, a couple of times. So just checking in my image, um, actually I don't really need this in front of our image, so I just delete this one, this one is fine. Okay, maybe just have another one on the edge of our image here, just to add some, some details. Um, what could be great also is to have some kind of shadow around here. So I just come to uh, the vegetation landscape folder, trees again, and just drag a tree over here. And you can change the scale, so I have a 
a big shadow that is going a bit on the building itself. I can also maybe change the time of day, something like that. So um, start to look nice. Uh, maybe it's time to add a bit some some life. So we'll check first the vehicles folder. So here we have plenty of uh, vehicles that I can simply drag and drop to my project. So I just add first an SUV in front of my garage. Here I can change the color of my car, maybe a bit dark red like that. Maybe actually this tree, oh, something like that. So we can see a good portion of the color. On the first front here, we can also place some car on the parking spot. Like here, I can place this sedan over here. Just need to check my image. It doesn't take too much space. That's fine. Uh, actually, I don't think I really need to add more. Let's check how it looks if I add some, if I add a couple of one like those just in front of the camera. I'm not even sure if you will uh, be able to see them in the in the shot, but oh, maybe actually let's let's come a bit closer to the ground like that and refresh the point of view. So um, so this is first way to add some vehicles just by drag and dropping them manually one at a time like that. But you can also uh, place them using a pass. So don't need that, don't need the library anymore. So here I'm going to the urban dock, pass, and here we have multiple paths. We'll start with the vehicle pass. I will select my pen here, and I will just click in the middle of my road, just turning the camera so we see the end of the road, and here I'm just clicking a second time, and now I right click to deselect uh, my tool. Once I unselect my tool, cars are automatically placed on the path and they are starting to drive along this shape, this line. In my dock here, I have a few options. Again, it's um, those options um, that is affected only this path. So here I can change the lane count. What I just want to do is make my path yep, one lane, but two-sided. Now that's fine, I can change here the density or I can even change the speed. Same thing for the characters. Now let's come back to the urban dock, pass, character pass. Here again I will select my tool and here I just create a small shape. Uh, here I'm just going to make a U-turn and create the shape in the other direction so I will peep off people walking both ways. Here I just um, have a bit less density and if I come back to my camera now we have some people walking here and there, we have some car driving as well. So here I'm just going to make sure people are not uh, walking into each other. Like that. So when you see here this, this orange color, that means that here the pass is overlapping. So make sure that um, the pass is not overlapping because we don't have a collision system right now inside Twinmotion. The objects, <coughs> sorry. The objects are just following the path, so make sure you avoid any collision. So uh, we are almost at the end. Um, last, last thing I want, um, maybe last thing, we'll check. So one thing that I want to talk about is reflection, how reflection works inside Twinmotion. For that, I will just raise the opacity of my glass to make them look as a mirror. When you look at the mirror, when you look at a reflective object inside Twinmotion, uh, it doesn't have much information. It's basically, um, it's because um, by default on, um, on the real-time rendering engine, the, all the geometry that is behind the camera is not calculated. It's a matter of optimizing the file. But if you start to look uh, on, the, on the edge, on the side like this, when the geometry starts to appear like that, 
um, you will see this information inside the reflection. A workaround for that is to use what we call the reflection volume. You can find that in volume, reflection probes. Here we just uh, drag, for example, this box probe over here. So what, what the box probe does, it's basically it captures a 360 image, a panorama, and it applies this panorama to uh, the object within this radius. So here is the radius of this box. So what I can do is just place this box on the side of my wall and just change the diameter so it affects my wall building. So now a 360 image has been created on this side over here. It affects all my glass panel. So I just now select back my grass and come back to something more credible. So now you see some nice reflection. You can see the, the tree on, on my glass. So we saw how we added some characters using the path, but we didn't saw how to add them manually one, uh, one at a time. So I'm coming back to my library, to the characters folder, human. If I want to add some one character, it's just a drag and drop from the library to the viewport. If I'm dragging the same character multiple times, it will take a random color preset. You can also change it manually over here. You can change the pose, maybe he's in idle state, maybe he's sitting, maybe he's lying, maybe he's even dancing. And after you choose a pose, you, can, you have a list of animations. So for every pose, there is a list of animation. Maybe he's doing this dance or maybe he's doing this one. If I want to add some character, I can just add them manually one at a time by drag and dropping from the human folder. But we also have a group folder. So for example, if I select this group of three people, at each time I will click in the viewport, Twinmotion will randomly add three different characters, so you won't see any repetition. So I think that's it uh, for this image. What I can do if I wanted to is uh, just set up a different output size. By default, Twinmotion exports on full HD resolution. You can uh, switch to 4K. And here you can even manually type uh, up to 8K. Um, I think that's, that's a good point of view. Uh, maybe I will just diminish, um, just lower the density of vehicle on my pass because I don't really need one uh, vehicle in front of my camera when I will be shooting the image. Um, before exporting this final image, we can just check how we can create an animation. I won't be rendering it, but it's just to show you how to create one. I will come back in the media section using my breadcrumb and now enter the video option. Create. Here, when I click on plus, it will create a first clip with a first keyframe. Here is the starting point of my animation. And now if I start to move my camera and click on the small plus button, here it will uh, sorry, here it will create a second keyframe. And Twinmotion create automatically the animation between the first keyframe and the second one. And that's it to create an animation. Let me just maybe create a second clip, maybe uh, on, on the top of my project, like that. So here yeah, I've just created this new clip. Uh, maybe for this purpose of this clip, I will just add some cars on, on the side here. something like that. What I want to do also is to duplicate my pass on the other side. So I just open my send graph. I don't really want to scroll down uh, to, to look for my pass. So here we can either use the search, the search option to tap pass and select my character pass. Or what I can also do is use our filters here. I click here, I will select pass and it will just show all the paths within my project. 
Now that my path is selected, I'm just going to press Shift and duplicate this path on the other side of my world. Take a few seconds to load the character and it, here we go. So here I have my second animation with some character, with some vehicles. I'm, I'm okay with that. So now that we have all our different media, maybe now it's time to export them. So how we can export a media? It's really simple. You just go to the export doc. You select the media you want to export. So here I just want to export image year one, but I can batch export multiple media. So here I can export, I can check image year ones. I can check those two clips if I want. And to export them all at once, I will just click on start export. I will send that to my desktop. So it takes a few seconds to generate this image on a full HD resolution. And here, if I come back to um, to my um, to my desktop, here I have my image that has been generated in just a couple of seconds. So hope you like this quick presentation, this quick um, showcase of how you can work with Twinmotion.